Hello from ISEP Study Abroad Headquarters in Washington, D.C. This is ISEP Live. My name is Chris, and today we're talking about uh, language learning in Germany, France, and Japan. So we have a lot to cover today. We're really excited that you're with us. So let's go ahead and get started and see what we are going to be talking about today. Uh, we're going to start with some general information about ISEP. What is ISEP? How does it work? From there, we're talking about uh, Marburg University in Germany. Uh, next, we will talk about Kansai Gaidai in Japan, and we'll finish off talking about uh, University Paul Valéry Mont Montpellier in Jap uh, excuse me, in France. Uh, finally, we absolutely want to hear from you. Uh, that's what we're here for is to answer your questions. We have a number of different ways that you can ask us questions. The first is right on your screen. You'll see right to the right of your video feed, there is a question and answer toolbar. Feel free to ask us questions there. Uh, your other option for questions is uh, using our hashtag ICEPLive. Uh, so we'll be monitoring our Twitter feed throughout the broadcast. If you have questions for us as we go, uh, definitely feel free to share them with us there and we will uh, take a look at those as we go. We'll answer all of our questions at the end, but as you have questions going through, definitely send them our way so we can uh, get those answers for you. So without any further ado, we'll get started. We have our director of ISEP Direct Programs here, Danita. She's going to start off talking to us about the differences in ISEP programs, and then she's going to talk to us a little bit about Germany. So take it away, Danita. Thank you, Chris, and welcome, guys, to our ISEP Live today. I'm going to start off by sharing with you uh, the two program options you have with ISEP. You have ISEP Direct and you have ISEP Exchange. Now, ISEP Direct works this way. It's where you pay ISEP and we pay your program fees on your behalf to the host university. Your placement is virtually guaranteed as long as you meet the specific academic requirements. So ISEP Direct, you pay ISEP and we take care of your tuition, housing and meals where relevant. ISEP Exchange, on the other hand, works a little bit differently. That is where you pay your home, university, tuition, housing, and meals, and then you switch places with an international student from a university that's within our network, within the ISEP Exchange network. And so that is one of the best ways to go abroad is if you do an exchange. Now, let's move on. Let's share, let, let me share a little bit with you about our program in Germany. Now, the program we have in Germany is located at a university called um, Philips Marburg, Städt Marburg, and it's located in West Central Germany. It's about uh, 45 miles north of Frankfurt. Frankfurt is a major city in uh, Germany. It's a, you have a lot of access to uh, to other sites in Europe. Now, the university, just to give you an idea about the town, the town is called Marburg. It's a university town. It is a stunning town. It is literally the town overlooks the Lahn River and you have this huge castle overlooking the river and it's surrounded by forests. Now, the Brothers Grimm are two, the, those brothers graduated from Marburg University and th those are the guys who wrote the fairy tales, um, Cinderella, Frog Prince, Hansel and Gretel, Rapunzel. Um, another famous graduate from Marburg University is Robert Bunsen. He did the, he created the Bunsen burner. Just, just that's a very fun fact to know about. Now, the university, something to think about too, is that the town of Marburg is beautiful. It is one of the places where uh, it's one of the few early medieval cities of unchanged character. And so you walk in this old town with cobblestone streets. It's the, the homes are very reminiscent of 17th century and 18th century frame homes. So when you study in Marburg, you're going to feel like you're in a bit of a fairy tale environment, very, very picturesque. Now, something to think about is what can you study at um, Germany? Now, the first six weeks when you go on ISEP Direct, the first six weeks you are going to study intensive German language learning. It's about 120 hours. And the that class is going to be complemented by taking another class in German history and culture course. Once these two courses are done, then you specialize in two courses in either German or in English. Now, if you can take those courses in German, that would be great, but that would be determined by your language level and you would have to test into that. Now, the language level courses, the English language, there's a whole variety of courses you can take. I recommend that you go to our website to see uh, if you have access to the humanities, business or what else you have access to. So check out our website. Now, where can you stay at the University of Marburg? You can stay uh, 
on uh, in dorms with other international students. It will be a shared room, and the dorms are located throughout the town of Marburg. It's beautiful. Our students generally really enjoy their their housing facilities because you that's a great way to get to know other students. Uh, you also will get a 200 euro stipend upon arrival just to help you get started and that is a good place to also share with you what is included in your program with uh, ISAP. You, what is included is uh, tuition, housing and then you'd have to pay for your meals. Now something else before we talk about when, when the deadline is, is that with this program you have three cultural immersions. You can go to Dresden, Berlin, and Cologne. And we highly recommend that you do all three, just so you know, just to give you a heads up, that two of those cultural uh, excursions are required. And generally, our students participate in the majority of our cultural excursions. It's a great way to get to know the rest of Germany, and it's a great way to connect with your other students who are studying with you at Marburg University. Another quick fact that I want to share with you is that uh, the town of Marburg is a very traditional uh, university town. So I'm saying that because that is a great way to meet other uh, German students and other international students. There's a ton of activities to do. You will have no shortage of meeting friends or um, have fun activities to do. Quickly, when can you go abroad? There's still time for next spring. The deadline is November 30th, uh, 2014. So that's coming right up. And the program includes, uh, your, like I said earlier, tuition and housing. And that fee is 9100 uh Dollars. Then, if you don't, if you can't go next spring, why don't you check out next fall? Uh, that deadline is June fifteenth. It's also the deadline for our full year program, and you can study with that program. It's uh, ISEP insurance, tuition, and housing, and that fee is nine thousand five hundred and fifty. Something else you can study, or for the full year program, that fee is going to be seventeen thousand eight hundred. And again, just so you know, it's going to include uh, your tuition housing and your insurance and with that i want to really encourage you guys to check out our website talk to your parents talk to your friends and talk to your uh, coordinators and learn more about our program and Marburg. great thanks yeah. so much danita a couple questions for you before yeah. uh, you leave us uh, you talked a little bit about housing but tell us a little bit more about that what does housing look like in Marburg? Yeah, so the housing, students actually really enjoy the housing because that is how they get to know uh, other international students and other German students. So you live in uh, shared rooms, and those rooms are often shared by other German student or by an Erasmus student. And what is an Erasmus student? An Erasmus student is a student who does a European exchange program. So that's a great way to meet people from all over Europe and all over the rest of the world and, and Germany as well. Okay. Yeah. You talked a lot about what things look like on campus. What kind of support do ISEP students have on campus? So that's a great question, Chris. So your support, uh, you have an ISEP coordinator on campus, and her name is Cornelia. And Cornelia will be in, located in the international office. And Cornelia will help you upon arrival with your orientation. She'll help you get located uh, as far as getting information about your visa, about your uh, your where you're staying, about classes, the excursions. And I met Cornelia very recently. She is very, she's great. Yeah, I really enjoyed meeting her. She's very friendly and she's very, uh, very understanding. So, well, thanks yeah. so much for sharing with us. Yeah, today. thank yeah. you guys. See yeah. you later. Next, we'll have our uh, program officer, Caroline, talking to us about our next program in Japan. So I will turn it over to Caroline. Yay. Okay. I think everybody can see me. Hi, everyone. So um, as Chris said, I'm the program officer for East Asia. And I want to tell you a little bit about Kansai Gaidai, which is in Hirakata, Japan. Um, Kansai Gaidai is a great program, um, really great experience, very immersive, and a lot of good opportunities. Um, a few fun things to know about Kansai Gaidai is that uh, you must maintain a 3.0 GPA. And that also means when you're going into the program, if you have that GPA going into the program and you maintain it through your stay there, you get a $6,000 scholarship and it is awarded to you. So that is fantastic. Everybody wants that. Definitely helps. Another great thing about Kansai Gaidai are the homestays. Of course, you have the dormitories, which is really great. You experience the other international students, and Japanese students, but the homestays are really unique. Again, you get that great immersion experience 
Um, Kansai Gaidai runs the homestay programs really well. Um, definitely don't miss out on that opportunity if you choose to do the homestays. Um, and then also there's the Himawari Club, just the Sunflower Club. Um, it's another good experience at Kansai Gaidai because you get to interact with the local children in that community, um, which is another good immersive experience, getting to know the society as, and again, that local community. Um, now, a little bit more information about the academic program. Um, with Kansai Gaidai, there are there is a wide variety of classes to choose from. Um, courses in international business and humanities and social science, but also what's really popular are the art classes that feature both traditional arts and contemporary arts. You don't want to miss out on that. Definitely a lot of fun. Um, and now, again, I do want to remind you that Kansai Gaidai does ask for you to have one semester of Japanese language study prior to going on their program. And it is very helpful to have that, but they do have good Japanese language courses as well. And then also, again, remember that 3.0 GPA because the $6,000 scholarship that they will reward to you for having those good grades. Um, and then moving on, I think, to the deadlines. Um, the deadlines that we're looking at now are for the fall semester of 2015 and the full year, and that's April 1st, 2015. Um, so definitely look out for that. The costs you're looking at for the fall semester is $18,550, and then with the full year, it is $35,600. And that includes the insurance, tuition, housing, and then some meals, um, I believe partial meals and dormitory and then um, more meals on the homestay as well. Um, so again, really consider Kansai Gaidai. It's a great program. I know many people who've gone on it and they've had a great time. Yeah, great. Thanks so much yeah. for telling us all about it. Um, I believe we have a recently returned student from Kansai yes. Gaidai with us. Um, let's see if we have Tria on the line. Are you with us, Tria? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Great. We can hear you. We don't have your video feed, but that's quite all right. We will. Uh, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Um, so, a couple questions for you. We want to hear all about your experience in Japan. S to start off with, tell us what a typical day for you in Japan looked like. Um, it varies actually because um, on weekends, since Kansagare is located right in the middle between Kyoto and Osaka, it's great to go um, back and forth with friends, just go see castles, shrines. Um, and then on the weekdays, um, I live an hour away. I am a homestay student. Okay. And then I lived with a family who lives in Hoshida, an hour away from um, Hirakatashi is where Kansagara is. Right. And, um, I commute one hour every day to school and then one hour back. It's great because I get to experience the uh, train system and just how, and just kind of see how Japanese students and people communicate. Right. It sounds like you were living like a local. Tell yeah, us about yeah. your experience with your homestay. What was that like? Oh, it's amazing. Um, one thing really, my very first day there, um, it was my birthday two days before school oh. started. So uh, my homestay, they took me to a restaurant. I ate out and they, they um, how do you say this? They dedicated a song for me. <laughs> and they were really sweet and I enjoyed them. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, to get a, more of an idea of what Japanese culture was like, can you tell us about maybe a piece of the culture that you didn't expect going in but learned to love? Um, they are hot spring, the way to take, um, to dip in hot spring. It was huh. really, <laughs> it was, I didn't expect because at first I was kind of like, I'm not used to hot spring and the tradition, and like their tradition or their um, usual way of getting and dipping into hot spring. Uh, they took me to a hot spring not too long after I arrived and um, they said the right way to go to hot spring is to stay for like the night. So before you eat dinner you take a dip in the hot spring for like 30 minutes soak up the um, hot, um, hot water and uh, out in the open like in the cold and then you come out eat dinner, and then after you eat dinner, you dip back into the hot spring, um, go back, you come back out, you go to sleep, and then the very, uh, the following morning, you do that over again before breakfast. And it was kind of eye-opening, but it, it was fun and interesting. 
Yeah, yeah. It sounds like <laughs> an interesting cultural experience you had. That's wonderful. Um, last question for you. Why did you choose ISEP specifically? I chose ISEP because I was well into the end of my um, college career. I was a senior that year. Um, I have all of my electives. Um, t I've already taken all my electives, so now I'm kind of trying to look for universities that have and can offer me courses um, towards my major. And I have a variety of different like locations and programs I can look at. And Consul Guide just really offers me communication courses that I can really apply and transfer back into my communication major. Right, right. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for being with us today. We appreciate you taking some time and sharing your experience with us. Mm -hmm. No problem. Thank you. Have a great one. Thank you. All right. I'm right. finishing up with our program today. We have one more uh, site to talk about in France. Our program officer, Melanie, is with us to share with us about that. So I will hand it over to Melanie. Hi, everyone. Uh, as Chris mentioned, I'm the program officer at ISEP who works with our programs in Belgium and France. But today I'm really excited to talk to you uh, a little bit more about our French language and culture program at Montpellier in particular and what might make that program a little bit different from some of the other programs we offer. So one important thing to know about Montpellier uh, or about this program is the setting. Montpellier is a beautiful medieval city um, and that rich uh, history is really reflected in its architecture and its ancient streets. Um, the university itself is one of the oldest uh, universities in Europe and as such Montpellier as a city has a long tradition of being a, su a student-centered city, of being a university town and a center of education. Um, one of the focal points of Montpellier as a city is the famous Place de la Comédie, which is a really great, beautiful, gorgeous um, plaza lined with shops and restaurants. And um, it's a really popular place for students to meet and maybe have a coffee or see some performance uh, art, some street art. Um, and Place de la Comédie was actually uh, is named for a theater that burned down a long time ago. But the theater and art scene in Montpellier is still thriving. And between that and the large and active student population in Montpellier, um, you really get a sense that you'll notice that Montpellier um, has a great energy um, and is a, you know, a neat place to be with lots of things to do. Um, another thing that uh, is good to know about Montpellier is its, its location is just so great. Uh, if you're interested in um, southern French culture, in uh, Mediterranean cultures, in, especially if you're interested in doing some independent travel, the um, there's just so much within easy access of Montpellier. So you could go visit, for example, the French Riviera or um, the walled uh, city of Carcassonne. All that's nearby. Um, if you'd like to take a trip up to the capital city of Paris, it's within a four hour train ride. Uh, you can take a quick trip down to Barcelona. It's only three hours away. So the location of Montpellier um, is also a great um, selling point for this program. Um, the, in terms of studying French language and culture, the French as a foreign language center at Montpellier is uh, highly respected and is one of the top centers for French language study and teaching uh, in France. And as such, um, students on that program are definitely el eligible to apply for our Annette Cata uh, scholarship, which is a competitive grant that we offer for students who are focusing on studying French language. Um, the, in terms of the program content of our French language and culture program at Montpellier, the uh, program is focused on intensive French study combined with tailored electives that are designed for learners of French language. And um, it is for all levels from beginning advanced students to advanced level students. 
Now, it's important that you have at least one year of French language experience at your home university before starting the program at Montpellier. Uh, another neat feature of this program is that advanced students actually have the opportunity to take one or two uh, regular university courses from the normal curriculum at the university, and they can take these uh, integrated courses with local students. So that's a neat feature of the program. Uh, the program also uh, includes organized activities and three uh, organized cultural excursions to sites of regional interest. So all that's included in the program fee and is a great benefit of this particular program. Um, up on the screen in front of you now, you'll see the deadlines and costs um, for this program. The program does include housing and tuition and ISEP insurance. You'll see that the costs are very affordable. And um, our deadline for both fall and full year is February 15, 2015. This is one of our earlier deadlines. Um, so be sure to you know, plan ahead and, and make sure to get those applications in as soon as possible. Thank you so much, Melanie. Sure. It sounds like an interesting program. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about it. Okay. How do you think a student might develop professionally from participating in this program specifically? Yeah, it's a great question. I think in particular, if a student is planning on doing anything with their French language, um, you know, going into a career that requires um, French language skills, mm -hmm. that this type of program is really indispensable because um, you know, you really need that immersion opportunity and to be able to do it for a semester or, or even better a year right. um, makes a huge difference in your language skills. Mm. So, uh, you know, that's something that's recognized by employers, it makes you more marketable, but it also just quite simply like really makes a difference in your French language language skills and if that's important for um, what you want to do, it's a great um, advantage to go on a program like this. Wonderful, wonderful. Tell us about what opportunities there might be for travel. Sure. Um, one thing we hear time and time again from students who study on this program is, you know, how great the travel opportunities are. Um, there's, you know, a great network of, of trains in that area that go to a lot of different places um, and it's all you know within just a few hours away so if you want to like I mentioned take a quick weekend trip to Spain it's not a problem um, getting to Paris is pretty easy we've had students take uh, really nice trips to Italy um, and then there's just so much in the immediate vicinity as well you know again it's right off the Mediterranean coast so right. lots of beautiful scenic um, regions uh, sites to explore right in the immediate vicinity. Right, well thank you so much. Sure. I wanted to also remind everyone again that we are using the hashtag ICEP Live. We do have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, so if, uh, some of our program staff are around to answer questions. Um, I'd love to get your feedback on these. So our first question comes from uh, Tammy and she is asking about the number of credits that ICEP students typically take uh, in any given program. Um, Melanie, can you talk to us about that a little bit? Sure, I can talk about that in a very general way. Um, ISEP students, all of our programs um, require that students enroll full time. Um, so you, you can expect to get full time credit for any program that you participate in, aside from maybe our summer programs, in which case you might get, you know, a couple classes of credit depending on the on the program. But if you're, you know, applying to a semester or a full year program, then you can expect to get full time credit. Um, how much credit you actually get will depend on the program and maybe even how many classes you enroll in um, on site. Great. Well, thank you so much. Sure. Um, and again, we want to remind everyone that we do have that hashtag ICEP Live. That's a living hashtag. So definitely, if you have questions after our broadcast, go back there. Uh, we'll be monitoring that uh, for some time to come. So definitely send us questions that way. Um, as far as other questions, we have um, Amy, uh, who is a return student. We're having trouble getting her added into the broadcast, unfortunately. Um, but if you can see Amy's uh, Google Plus information there in your sidebar and you have questions about studying in France, she would be a great person to get in touch with there um, and we'll definitely keep her in mind. Um, again, 
uh, always share with us on the hashtag and on social media. Um, from here, we're talking through uh, just a couple steps. Now that you have an idea of what these programs look like, uh, what opportunities might be out there for you, it's time to start researching programs. So the best way to do that, again, as Donita mentioned earlier, is online. Uh, we're at www.icep.org and connect with us on social media. We're on most of the major, major social media networks at ICEP Study Abroad, and that's a great way to learn more information and to see what we have going on at ICEP Study Abroad headquarters. From there, it's time to meet with an ICEP coordinator. As a student at a member institution, you have someone on your campus who is an expert on ICEP. They can talk you through your decision-making process. They can help you with your application. Uh, so they're a great resource, and again, right on your campus. So get in touch with that person and start the conversation there. And finally, once you've decided on a program, you've visited your ICEP coordinator, it's time to apply. Our application is housed at www.icep.org apply. From there, you can start to see what the application looks like, what steps you need to take, um, and again, review uh, deadlines for these and any other programs you might be interested in. Um, I want to thank everyone who watched again one more time. Uh, thank all of our program staff for being here, and thank all of our student attorneys who are so enthusiastically sharing their experience. That's all the time we have for today on ICEP Live, but thank you for joining us.